multiple methods of inquiry and argument to produce and transform policy with policy relevant information that may be utilized in political settings to resolve public problems so this is main objective is how to solve public problems and these pro public problems can be solved through the policy approach policies can be fruitful on the basis of the different information relevant information obtained from the different angles or different stakeholders so the objective of policy is to solve the public's problems or problems affecting the people similarly in other words jacob b ukilis he describes that policy analysis is the systematic investigation of alternative policy options we know when we are approaching a problem a problem doesn't always carry a single solution there can be different solutions or different ways to approach the problem similarly when we are going to formulate a particular policy different alternatives can be framed or can be formulated because one problem doesn't always carry doesn't always take only one way of solving it there can be different methods or different approaches to solve a problem similarly in case of policy matters there can be different alternatives alternative one alternative two alternative three so this way there may be different alternatives in order to solve a particular problem particular policy matter so this systematic investigation of alternative policy options different options and therefrom we will have to decide or we will have to uh, identify which alternative is going to help us the most and uh, the assembly and the integration of evidence assembly and the integration how to collect together assembly means here how to collect together the different um, uh, interpretation of information and some attempt to predict the consequences of alternative courses of action so again there is also the importance of gathering of information because unless we gather the information it will not be possible to approach towards the solution that is why gathering of information or collection of information is also quite important and that is very well part of the policy process so uh, then only we can say the attempts to predict the consequences of alternative courses of action so on the basis of those information we can easily evaluate or we can easily identify what can be the consequences in case of different alternatives the consequences in case of different alternatives and from among those alternatives if the consequences in case of any one becomes more attractive more plausible more appreciable then we generally go to revise or go to accept that particular alternative and that becomes the policy so that is finally translated into the form of a policy similarly pattern and saviki they also describe that policy analysis is a systematic evaluation of the technical and economic feasibility evaluation of the technical and economic feasibility what is the technique associated with the policy process and also what is the economic angle economic feasibility whether it is economically possible or not suppose if we are dreaming big if we are 
formulating a grand policy, but there is no adequate economic provision for it. How can we materialize it? How can we achieve it? So that is the difference. That means we will also have to take into account the uh, factor of feasibility or possibility. If a goal is not possible to be achieved, why should we approach that goal or why should we take that goal in any way? So, this is technical and economic feasibility, both technical aspect and also economic aspect. Technical we know because you know in some area, some specific technique is there. So, for example, science and technology policy. Here, generalists cannot do anything. So, in matters of science or suppose space policy. Suppose India is going to formulate its space policy. So, obviously, there is involvement of the technical aspect which cannot be known or which cannot be done by any generalist. Those who are specifically qualified in those scientific areas, they can only join or they can only contribute they can only participate in such type of policy formulation or policy making. So technical and economic feasibility and political viability, whether politically it is possible or not, that is also another factor to be examined of alternative policies, strategies for implementation and consequences of policy adoption. So that is uh, a strategies for implementation. What can be the different strategies for the implementation of such policies which have technical as well as economic aspects involved with it and then consequences of policy adoption. What can be the result or what ultimately can be materialized when the policy is implemented that is consequence consequence is known only when the action is over action part is over or application part is over so that is consequence now let us focus on the types of policy analysis so there are different types of policy analysis which have been narrated and they are like empirical evaluative or normative policy analysis. So empirical here, that is what happened to the problem earlier. These are the components in the light of which policy analysis is done under this approach or this type of policy analysis. So the focus is what happened to the problem earlier. That means whether the problem was effectively solved or it could not be solved or where what were the associated problems with it similarly where the objectives of the policy met the objectives of the policy or the goals what were the goals framed or formulated within the policy process and how they were materialized or not what should be done for the future course of action Every policy has a future implication. Whether a policy is successful or it is a failure, obviously it has a message for the future, message to the future. So the future course of action can ultimately be determined on the basis of the policy outcomes. So the empirical approach is based on an interpretation of the past policies. So, interpretation of the past policies. That means, what were the policies that were adopted in the past? If we are dealing with the space policy, then space policy is not the only one which is being undertaken at present. Such policies might also have been taken right from the time when the country became independent because you know our space administration or space policy which is 
which also dates back to the post independence period it is not that only it has been possible uh, only uh, recently okay so every policy tradition has a past whether it is in matters of science and technology or in space or in uh, we can say uh, um, any developmental project or anything population policy agricultural policy education policy science and technology policy so there are different policies and every policy definitely has a past that means what was done in that respect in the past because past experiences also help us in enriching our knowledge in increasing our knowledge about that about that particular aspect the evaluative approach to policy analysis focuses on program evaluation so evaluation say for example we are you uh, we are studying throughout the year and what is study or what has been our enrollment it is it needs to be evaluated and it is evaluated through the process of examination so throughout the year we undertook the classes we conducted the self study and finally how much we have digested the subject it needs to be evaluated and that is evaluated through the process of examination similarly every policy also needs to be evaluated <coughs> in a proper manner evaluation can only determine help in determining whether a policy has been properly successful adequately successful or not then comes your retrospective and prospective policy analysis retrospective means with back date effect something which is done by keeping the past in view that is retrospective and prospective is something which is done by keeping the future in view so the retrospective policy analysis is also sometimes termed as ex post or post hoc policy analysis that means we can go back to certain period from which we can make the policy assessment in a proper manner so retrospective policy analysis refers to the historical analysis and interpretation of past policies because the past knowledge definitely helps us because experience is always valuable so what experience we gain that is vital for our future course of action that is quite natural similarly prospective policy analysis focuses on the future outcomes of a proposed policy so prospective or prospective policy analysis always helps in the process of determining or predicting at least we cannot determine it but about the future we can some do something in matters of its uh, prediction let us calculate or let us uh, we can say make a projection and that prediction or projection may not be true or may be true so there are the possibilities we cannot say that prediction will always be true or will always be false it's not like that now comes your predictive descriptive and prescriptive policy analysis so predictive policy analysis refers to the forecasting of the future just like the prospective in the prospective one we also mentioned we also knew that it is something about the future similarly prediction prediction is also about the future in future what the policy is going to achieve or what is going to be done so that is the uh, predictive analysis now prescriptive analysis is here when the policy analysis analysis are not sure about the nature of solution to a problem 
or there is no programmed way of selecting a particular solution among alternatives, then they may opt for prescriptive policy analysis. Prescriptive to prescribe something or to it is also in some way or the other similar to the manner of we can say prediction. So prescribing something. So this is when the policy analysts are not sure about the nature of solution to a problem. So they are not sure about the solution of the problem. Or there is no programmed way of selecting particular solution among alternatives. That means we are unable to select the alternatives. Then they may opt for prescriptive policy analysis. So this is something which we operate in a in an environment of uncertainty environment of uncertainty so if the study recommends for lowering income tax rates that will result in a higher savings this is a prescriptive policy so here this is an example in order to understand what can be understood or what can be known by prescriptive policy analysis so this is an example to which we can better understand the nature of the prescriptive policy analysis uh, so lowering income tax rates that will result in higher savings so if the income tax is reduced then people will get some more money and that can be saved this is a prescriptive policy analysis, but how far it is true or not, only the concrete situation will tell, concrete situation will uh, project or will convince, okay. So this is just a prescription that lowering the income tax, that means those who are, suppose those who are responsible for formulating income tax policy, they decide that if we can bring down the income tax rate a little, then automatically people will be happy. They will get some more money in their hands and that extra money, they will definitely motivated to save for the future. So bringing down income tax rate will increase the rate of savings. This is a prescription. Okay, so that is why it is known as prescriptive policy analysis. So descriptive policy analysis refers to historical or retrospective analysis of past policy. This is, you know, actually these are some of the, uh, we can say, uh, approaches or some of the techniques, some of the methods which are associated with the nature of policy making. It might be appearing a little bit uh, problematic to us because we are not associated with it. But actually those who are directly involved in the process of policy making, they will be finding it quite easy. Okay, so this is something we can say a, an explanation about the different uh, methods, different steps, different approaches associated with the uh, policy process as a whole. So, uh, the prescriptive or uh, predictive analysis deals with future course option, action, while prescriptive and evaluative analysis are concerned with past actions. So, descriptive and evaluative, when do we evaluate? only after something has been done that is evaluate that is why it is known as with past actions that means actions which have already been completed then or in those cases only description and evaluation are possible or descriptive and policy uh, prescriptive policy analysis is possible evaluative policy uh, so description and evaluation that is possible only when some past action has already been undertaken. 
now methods and techniques in policy analysis so what are the methods or techniques associated with policy analysis now these methods and techniques may be expressed as graphs diagrams tables decision trees or mathematical equations that is why right in the beginning we mentioned that there is a bit of science so while policy making or policy is an act policy making is an act policy analysis is a bit of science why because these are the applications involved in the process of policy analysis okay so what are the methods these are the methods and techniques such as diagrams part of statistics economics mathematics diagram tables that is also a numerical skill decision trees sometimes decisions they are formulated in different graphic manners or mathematical equations mathematical equations are also used in order to analyze the policy uh, different policies from time to time so techniques such as linear programming marginal analysis these are some of the techniques which are also used in uh, connection with the policy analysis pro process and this programming that term is associated with computer science okay linear programming or even marginal analysis this may be a part of mathematics i am also not that much adept that much proficient in dealing with all these techniques but some i have understood in my capacity which i will try my best to explain to you some of you also might have been uh, uh, we can say quite uh, equipped or quite uh, qualified enough to uh, be quite able to understand it easily if that that is so then it is definitely a, a good or appreciable issue so there is also need for ethics in policy analysis while we are analyzing policy we must remember there are some ethicality or issue of ethics ethical unethical good bad right wrong appropriate inappropriate so these type of considerations or moral immoral these are the issues which are associated with this consideration of ethicality in matters of policy analysis so these are related to administrative decisions bureaucratic procedures and rules of behavior regarding clients and supervisors clients means those who are the beneficiaries of policy and supervisors are those who are uh, responsible for making the supervision or those who are framing the policy evaluating the policy examining the policy and also implementing the policy so that is so there these are related to that means the question of ethics question of ethics is related to administrative decision what type of decision is being taken by the administrative machinery of the state whether that decision is actually going to benefit the people or not if it is going to benefit the people then obviously it is positive or ethical if it is not going to benefit the people in any way or rather it is going to harm the people then obviously we can say the question of ethics has been compromised uh, bureaucratic procedures because we know bureaucracy sometimes or for that matter every agency every individual every person is not free from errors so while bureaucracy falls bureaucracy commits a mistake 
that affects the society quite seriously. Okay, so that is also the question of we can say ethics. While different officials working in the bureaucracy are going to implement different policies, say for example, poverty eradication. In matters of poverty eradication, if the true beneficiaries are not going to get the benefit, rather there are some vested interests who are manipulating the benefits, then obviously it is unethical. Those who are homeless, they should get, we can say, the different benefits of Avas Yojana, whether spearheaded by the central government or the state government. But does it actually happen always? Sometimes even ineligible persons, they try to manipulate the system. Middlemen, middlemen, or sometimes we can say vested interests, they have, they usually enter into the fray and they manipulate the benefits from them for themselves. So that is something wrong unethical uh, procedures and also rules of behavior regarding clients and supervisors for example the Pareto rule states that an optimum distribution of income in society is one where some individuals are benefited without loss to the others that means the Pareto optimality guarantees that all persons in the society will retain the income for which they are entitled by their ability and work. So this is an example and that is known as in social sciences it is known as Pareto optimality. Pareto optimality means this is a condition in which everybody will benefit from a particular scheme launched for the benefit of the society or the members of the society where there will be no discrimination everybody those who are higher income groups they are also going to benefit those who are middle income groups they are also going to benefit those who are small income groups they are also going to benefit so that is known as Pareto optimality an optimum level of uh, we can say policy implementation in which nobody is a sufferer that is Pareto optimality however in practice this may not happen since the Pareto optimality doesn't reflect on just entitlements to income based on illegality fraud racial and other forms of discrimination just the thing I was telling you while I was explaining that is the role of the middlemen the role of the vested interests so they try to manipulate the process so that is the thing that is on the basis of which we say that this is the leakage or the failure of the different principles or different policies and also the failure of the principle of Pareto optimality. However, values such as equality, justice, etc. cannot be proved through empirical sources. So this is somewhat we can say the drawback even though these are all uh, we can say based on different techniques the different techniques they do not always promise that it is fail safe or it will always be free from errors and it will always be for the good of the people it is not like that okay so uh, this is the question of the ethics now process of police analysis so there are different states there is a diagram under your and it is under unit 19 perhaps yes 19 so there is a diagram which explains the policy analysis process or the process of policy analysis 
So the first step is to verify, to define and detail the problem. That means let us try to digest the problem. Let us try to understand the problem properly. Only after the policy formulators have understood the problem properly, then only they can verify, define it and also the detailed problems associated with that can be stated clearly by them. That is step one. Step two involves establish evaluation criteria. So what is the criteria through which the different alternatives can be evaluated. So when while you are detailing the problem, obviously you are going to ascertain or going to identify what are the possible alternatives. And when there are more than one alternatives, every alternative needs to be evaluated. So what is the benefit? or cost benefit analysis of course cost benefit analysis is something which is purely in economic terms but cost benefit analysis can also be done in terms of some intangible ways or intangible benefits coming out of a particular policy so establish evaluation criteria so what are the criteria on the basis of which we are going to evaluate or going to um, assess the different pros and cons associated with the policy process. Then third is identify alternative policies. So then uh, after the criteria, then we shall identify alternative policies. Policy means there is not a single policy while we are going to uh, address the issue of poverty it is not that only there is only a single way to solve the problem uh, problem of poverty so there can be different approaches all the approaches they need to be stated clearly so identify alternative policies what are the alternative policies through which we can also uh, address the problem at hand or the problem in question so then comes evaluating alternative policies. So when we have so many choices before us, we will have to pinpoint which choice is going to give us the most rewards. That is known as evaluating alternative policies. Step 5. Display and distinguish among alternative policies. Then let us make a list display and distinguishing distinguish among alternative policies so make a display that these are the alternatives through which we can approach this particular policy or we can take this policy along this course and this is for the information and knowledge of all those who are concerned with the policy or who are the stakeholders direct or indirect stakeholders associated with the policy then monitor the implementation policy finally to monitor the implementation policy monitoring and evaluation we have already covered it in some of the past uh, lesson past uh, assignments or past classes so monitoring and evaluation is also very important in matters of policy so unless there is proper monitoring policy implementation may go wrong okay so if there is no proper monitoring then obviously that means there must be a pilot if the pilot is not ready pilot is not alert then the flight may deviate from the course that is monitoring so policy must be monitored while it is being implemented so these steps they have been explained below the steps which we discussed briefly so that you can uh, go through in detail and that can also enhance your understanding
all these steps, the step one to step six, they have all been explained uh, in detail. So it is, I will, I will request you all to go through these explanations and those explanations will definitely help in increasing the understanding of these different steps associated with policy process. Now, <clears throat> so policy analysis, what are some of the methods or techniques? Now, let us focus on some of the methods and techniques associated with policy analysis. So, uh, these methods and techniques are like this, cost-benefit analysis or popularly it is known as CBA, cost, C for cost, C benefit, A analysis. So, CBA and input-output analysis, this is something which uh, was popularized in the concept of systems analysis, that is input output, uh, that is popularized by Lasswell and Kaplan. Uh, the CBA or cost benefit analysis is widely used in evaluating policy alternatives and comparing them. So, what are the alternatives and then compare? compare the alternatives with each other and input out analysis is used in evaluating policy alternatives so what are the alternatives they also need to be evaluated so social cost benefit analysis this is so the cba or cost benefit analysis is one of the methods used in economic evaluation of policy analysis economic evaluation of policy analysis that means whether it is going to be profitable or not if we are going to make more and more loss then obviously that is not preferable to accept or to adopt so that is economic analysis cost benefit means obviously it is in terms of money how much we are going to spend and how much we are going to benefit that is the analysis cba can be used prospectively to recommend policy actions it can also be used retrospectively to evaluate policy performance that means retrospectively means something which has already been done that can also be analyzed or analysis because here we are focusing on policy analysis so that analysis can also be done on those policies which have already been adopted or implemented because past analysis will also help us in obtaining the information about our future course of action and that will also suggest whether the investment was in the right direction or not similarly it can also be prospective this analysis the cba cost benefit analysis can be applied in both the cases in the respect in retro retrospective manner and also in prospective manner that means the actions which have already been undertaken the policies which have already been adopted in that case also and the policies which are going to be adopted in future in that case case also because calculation of cost and benefit can be made possible in case of any future project that is not going to be that difficult because when you are going to make an assertion say for example suppose the government is or the state is going to undertake a project for the or within the coming 10 years that doesn't mean that there will be no cost benefit analysis obviously there is a calculation so priorly there is a calculation what can be the 
benefit or what can be the cost from out of the project which is our policy which is going to be implemented in future so cba is also known as the rate of return analysis cba or cost benefit analysis is also known as the rate of return analysis the rate of return how much return we are going to get how much return we are going to get because on that depends whether the preference for policy implementation is going to be materialized or not okay rate of return how much return we are going to get if i am investing suppose 100 crores of rupees or if a, a public undertaking is going to invest 100 crores of rupees then what return it will give so within the stipulated time period if the return is attractive if the return is appreciable then obviously uh, action can go ahead or implementation can be possible if the return is not going to be encouraging obviously why to take the risk jodi amku faida ta no milibo tahale jone kon pai kharch kariyo plan anse so the rationale of using cba so uh, the cba tries to estimate net social welfare change what is the net social welfare change that means if we are going to undertake any task how much it is going to cause or how much it is going to benefit necessitate social welfare how much it is going to benefit the members in the society um, between um, welfare changes that is difference between social benefits and social cost okay so social cost and social benefit how much there is going to be invested and how much we are going to derive as the return from out of t out of it as a result of policy in a standard cba social welfare is measured in terms of net benefits of the policy so what is social welfare the net benefit of the policy gross and net this concept um, i suppose all of you might be knowing so net benefit what is actually the net benefits available to the society okay so a policy is said to be efficient if it maximizes the net benefits available to the society so then only we can say that this policy is efficient when a policy is efficient when it is the net benefits available to the society is assured then economic efficiency economic efficiency is also uh, there on the basis of which obviously it will help us in deciding our choice for a policy so economic efficiency this is a measure of net benefits accruing through a policy to the society so what is also the uh, um, the component of net benefits economic efficiency economically efficient or viable which is economically viable if we are spending less and the return is getting more or reward is more obviously it is economically efficient but when our expenditure is more than the benefit that we are going to derive in that case obviously this is something risky and it will never cause what is known as the social welfare or social benefit so economic efficiency is a matter which is decided on the basis of also this cost benefit analysis how far 
So, for example, in the implementation of a health program, the government may advise its citizens to go for health insurance. Alternatively, it can build hospitals in the public sector and offer health services or take preventive health measures. Each of these would have differential costs to the government as well as to the people. So the government pathway, there are two alternatives. Suppose in matters of health administration, the government is going to adopt a policy. And in that policy, there are two approaches. The government can decide that it will motivate the people to go for health insurance. So health insurance means obviously the risk of payment on the government will be less because the health cost or the health care cost will be borne by the insurer. But there is also another possibility that the government will go on opening as many public hospitals as possible and can provide free health care benefit to the people. So these are the two ways. One, it can motivate the people to <coughs> go for health insurance. So when health insurance is going to motivate people to go for health insurance, when people are going to go for health insurance, the government is going to be a financial burden. Government itself will open different hospitals, public hospitals, where free health care will be provided to people. So here again there is also we can say cost benefit analysis. By that way, the government either is going to be popular or it is going to lose some degree of popularity. So if it is going the whole health insurance way, then the government is risking some uh, popularity. But if it is going for opening more and more public health or public hospitals and healthcare is being provided, then obviously it will give or it will give the government some uh, appreciation. People will appreciate that yes, this is the government which is doing something for us free of cost. And that is the burden of the government to bear the cost. So when different hospitals are being opened, obviously it involves a cost. And that cost is borne by the government where the uh, and there is also the free healthcare program facility provided. So in these two cases, each of these would have different costs to the government as well as to the people. Okay, so government definitely is going to make an evaluation in between these two approaches. Okay, sometimes I am using Odia. Is it causing any difficulty to anyone? There are participants, four participants. Tusova, Bhavana, Gayatri, Vijayalakshmi. All girls. So, no, sir. Uh, when I am resorting to occasional Odia, is it causing any problem? No, sir. Okay. So, uh, no, sir. from the name, okay, okay. From the names, I guess all are Odia students. That is why sometimes I am resorting to Odia person. Okay. So uh, now economic efficiency. Then comes equity. Equity is the question of equity. So that is also quite uh, associated with this. Uh, policy analysis process. What is equity? There are instances 
where the policy proved to be more economically efficient but are not equitable. So what is equitable? Equitability is in our example of health policy, the government may decide to subsidize the health insurance. This policy may benefit all people in the society irrespective of their income levels. Equity means here everybody should get the benefit of healthcare facilities provided by the government. Sometimes it so happens that those who are the rich they can bear the cost for themselves and some of the benefits are not available to the poor because they cannot afford the cost of health care. So this is not equity. Equity means here the rich will be getting, getting the benefit at the same time the health care benefits will also be available to the poor and that can be done when the cost is subsidized by the government. So the government will provide some subsidy. Subsidy means here part of the cost will be borne by the government and only a marginal part will be borne by the people. So that is the method through which equitability is ensured. Jim the game coach corner, nah, the private hospital there are varieties of hospitals. In the Jara Poison, I think the government hospital facility, then the city scan, city scan got a coach and a costly test. A costly test, Poishavala, Pozaroza Tanga de Kuruji, in the government concourse, and totally subsidized for the therapeutic government hospital. Take them from the Amri, or a local public. So this is equity. Do facilitate into the empty heat and the Raja safe facility that capable of rich and affluent they would have availed and it would have been deprived or it would have been unavailable to the poor. Then that would have that would have created a condition of inequity. Okay, so equitability. Similarly, when the different methods of taxation by taxing the rich. The government is taking the money and that money is being invested in different welfare measures so that the poor can benefit. So that is equity. Advantages and limitations of CBL that is we can say uh, so what is cost benefit and analysis what are its advantages and what are also its limitations. Advantages are it enables the policy analyst to work out the actual costs and benefits of alternative policies. So when we know the actual cost and benefit of a policy, then it becomes clear to us whether we shall go for that policy or not. In this process, the costs and benefits that have not been part of the discussion may come to light. So that is one benefit. The CBA allows us to compare different programs like health, environment, education, etc. So this helps us in a comparison. Comparison between the cost and the benefit, which obviously helps us to take a concrete decision in the choice of the policy, in matters of the choice of the policy. So apart from these benefits or advantages, the disadvantages associated with CBA are also like this. It puts exclusive emphasis on economic efficiency. So policies are not to be evaluated only in terms of its economic component. 
sometimes some policies also need to be assessed need to be appreciated in terms of its long term benefits to the society or to the people khali gote arthik drushtikon ro sab guda ko chinta kale thik hue nahi onek samay re tenu prakruta re ko policy ro gurutva kete ebong taro prakruta ro faida kete seta ko dekhiba ko padibo sab gule arthik drushtikon ro chinta kale seta thik hue nahi the monetary value is an inadequate measure of responsiveness so only to calculate the cost in some part or it is sometimes very misleading and also harmful since the actual value of money varies from one person to another so value of money for a rich person is different value of money for a poor person is different so uh, value of money is more for whom the rich or the poor value of money is more for the rich or for the poor anyone can respond poor sir, poor, sir i think yes yes you are right yes sir <laughs> you are right but, value of value of money is obviously more for a poor man than yes, a rich man so here uh, the monetary value is an inadequate measure that means insufficient or not a proper measure yes, of res responsiveness uh someone's mic someone's mic mic is yes, Yes, now it is okay. So, response since the actual value of money varies from one person to another. For example, the extra income of rupees hundred may have. This is some example in order to uh, uh, explain the point a little bit clearly. So, when the actual market prices are not available, the policy analyst is forced to use shadow prices that are in practice. subjective and arbitrary that means sometimes the concept of value actual market price are not available because when we are going to evaluate a policy obviously actual cost is helpful but when the actual cost or actual market price of commodities or components are not known in that case you cannot make a perfect evaluation a perfect cost benefit analysis and that also happens on many occasions so identification of costs and benefits here uh, in order to arrive at the best cost benefit estimates it is important to identify all costs and benefits and measure them in rupee term so what is the total cost in rupee term what is the total benefit in rupee term in practice it is very difficult in many situations sometimes it is not that easy to determine the cost in rupee term in uh, many situations however the policy analyst should try to minimize the error in estimating the costs and benefits by including all of them so minimization of error depends on the person concerned so those who are analyzing policy those who are evaluating policy they can minimize the cost also and for these uh the costs and benefits can be classified into internal and external costs and benefits tangible and intangible costs and benefits direct and indirect and also net efficiency and redistributional 
So internal and external costs and benefits. So the costs and benefits can be either internal or external to a given policy or project, uh, project target group or jurisdiction. So what is internal or external to a policy or project depends upon how the policy analyst draws the boundaries to that policy around the target group or jurisdiction. So what is internal and what is external that depends on the discretion of those who are directly involved in the process of policy making. Okay. So what is internal and what is external? Here, if the policy aims at a subpopulation or if the policy aims at the society as a whole, then there are no external costs or benefits. So when a policy is going to affect or going to be implemented by keeping the whole society in view, there is no question of any external costs or benefits. So everything is internal. But if the policy aims at a subpopulation, that means a section of the population or a particular geographical area, then there are external costs and benefits in addition to the internal costs and benefits. That means when the policy is applicable on a whole society, there is no question of any external cost or external benefit. But when it is going to affect a section of the population, suppose a policy meant for the minorities. So when it is meant for the minorities, obviously the government will or the uh, public officials or those who are the policy makers, they will take certain minority groups into account. So that is a section of the population, not the whole society. Here, obviously, there will be some external factors or external costs and benefits in addition to the internal costs and benefits. For example, construction of a factory in a particular geographical area may provide employment opportunities to some people in the locality of the factory. The pollution released from the factory may affect not only local people but also people living down the street. Therefore, while calculating the costs and benefits of a policy, the policy analyst should take into account all the costs and benefits that may be internal or external to the policy. So suppose a factory is going to be set up in a particular locality. So that particular locality is going to benefit. Suppose Nalpo. Nalpo came up at Onkul. Now Onkul has gained or Onkul has got a reputation of being the uh, industrial hub or industrial towns. People in the vicinity or people in the locality also could benefit some way or the, or the other their economic condition improve. So there are some through direct employment, some through indirect means, opening shops or how we can say from uh, um, entering into ancillary businesses. So that is something there. But obviously when the question of pollution comes, say for example, Nalco as bond, it is obviously going to affect the locality but at the same time support the industrial smoke. When the question of industrial smoke comes into question, obviously it is going to affect people even outside that area. And when the policy makers are making a cost benefit analysis, they can do the right thing only when 
they include both internal as well as external cost benefit analysis. That means they will have to take into account the cost of the locality being benefited and the benefit also of the locality being affected. At the same time, how is it going to impact the life of the others who are beyond the zone or beyond the locality? Because it is also going to affect their lives. So there is also cost, cost to the life of the people, those who are getting exposed to the pollution because of the narco or because of the factory. Obviously, that is also the cost associated with it. And this is external. So internal, external, cost, benefit, all things they need to be properly assessed, properly analyzed while there is the issue of policy or public policy. Tangible and intangible costs and benefits. Tangible and intangible costs and benefits. So tangible costs and benefits are those that can be quantified in monetary terms. Quantified quantification. Its quantity can be known in terms of money, such as cost of land, operating cost, savings, avoidance of future costs, etc. So these are tangible, which can be very easily known. Cost of the land, it is quite known. Operating cost, it is also, it can be determined. Savings, avoidance of future costs, etc. Intangible costs and benefits are those that cannot be measured in monetary terms. So something which can be exactly measured in monetary terms, that is known as intangible costs. Suppose, let me repeat, the cost of those things like land, operating cost, savings, etc which can be exactly calculated in monetary terms that is known as tangible cost. And intangible costs and benefits are those that cannot be measured in monetary terms. So those which cannot be measured in monetary terms, they are known as intangible costs and benefits. Intangible costs and benefits. So improved quality of, li of the life of people because of clean air is one such intangible cost and benefit. So if the industry takes sufficient measures to bring down pollution, obviously it will benefit or help the health of the people. Okay, so that is intangible cost, which can be also taken into account or can be taken into consideration. In this case, the policy analyst may attempt to estimate the shadow prices by making subjective judgments about the monetary value of costs and benefits. So here, this is something which is known as tangible and intangible cost. Tangible cost means Jotaku I am a clear cut money akare jahara value taku nilukono kot pariba. Jem the kuagala drajo land cost hella, but the Jota kete savings or chi, Juman employees, Seman Koro, but Jota hella operating cost, Toliva pain factor taku, Rajakama Koriva pain to cost, that is also measurable. Hella tangible. Intangible corn, Najodi. Government put a say factory, Ponosu put a major nochi, Jokereki, Lokumanakora Kista benefit to Jemti reduction of pollution. The pollution that we reduce Korgala Konhojina automatically people are going to benefit in terms of getting clean air. Clean air robot cost or cheap, it has not been determined. So that is intangible, intangible cost. Similarly, there is direct and indirect cost. 
direct and indirect cost. Any policy or project generates costs and benefits directly as well as indirectly. Here, indirect costs and benefits are those that do not relate to the objectives of a program. So, no relation with the objectives of a program. For example, the amount of leisure time or other indirect outcomes of the health program are indirect costs and benefits. The amount of leisure time, how much leisure time people are getting. So that is here we can say something indirect cost. However, for the policy analyst, the indirect costs and benefits are not of much importance. Therefore, the analyst considers only direct costs and benefits. That means by the implementation of a particular policy, if the people are going to benefit in some way or the other, then here there is the question of direct and indirect cost. So direct cost is something which can be known clearly. And Indirect cost is something which cannot be known that much clearly. So, indirect cost is an example suppose because of the implementation of policy, people are getting some leisure time because people always want that they should have sufficient leisure time during which they can at least think about themselves. They can spend the time according to their own sweet will. Leisure time ko na ame sabta re chhau din kaam koriya bhi jayegi sunday ta chhuti koriye. That is leisure time. Everybody wants it because that is also part of uh, part the employment policy of the state. Employment policy of the state. Similarly, there was a revision. Central government uh, has now decided that we will resort to five day week. So central government employees mane ko na na sabta ko dui din chhuti pao chhuti. That is the central government policy. So is your leisure time Tara was gonna indirect outcomes of the health program are indirect uh, indirect costs and benefits. So a good approach is gonna indirect cost and benefit is your leisure time that is something indirect, it is not direct. <clears throat> the net efficiency and redistributional benefits net efficiency and redistributional benefits so the question is whether the total costs and benefits create an aggregate net benefit so what is net gross root i am coach gross of net a concept of both way i am so here the question is whether the total cost and benefits create an aggregate net benefit okay so after uh, we can say uh, putting together the costs and benefits ultimately what we get the resultant one that resultant is whether it is in terms of benefit or it is in terms of cost so that is the net that means adding and subtracting together the two components, whatever is obtained ultimately, that is known as the net benefit. Net benefits of, or they have the effect of simply redistributing the income among different groups of population. So redistribution. Earlier, you have learned that net efficiency maximizes the net benefits. The redistribution and benefits are those that redistributes the income among various groups of population without maximizing the net benefits. So redistribution, what is redistribution? Just a little while before I was telling you the method of taxation. Why the government taxes the rich? Because the rich can pay the tax and they have different avenues 
they have different sources of income. So those who are getting extra income, they can also pay something to the state because state also needs resources, state also needs revenue. And those revenues, they can be spent in different developmental activities by establishing industry, by constructing roads, by uh, opening airports, or by providing some, uh, we can say, health benefits to the people, or uh, creating some employment opportunities for those who are unemployed. So these are the things. So the redistribution, that means previously the distribution of wealth or distribution of resources was biased in favor of some sections and biased against some other sections. And particularly here, the divide between the rich and the poor. Obviously, when we say distribution and redistribution of resources of society, obviously it means the unfair distribution of resources between the rich and the poor. So rich are getting richer, poor are getting poorer. So that is the fault of the policy making agency. That is why there is the need for redistribution. So instead of being satisfied or instead of being complacent to the existing cost benefit analysis or to the existing, you can say, uh, distribution system, the government realizes that there should be a redistribution method. The redistribution means distribute again. What to distribute again? The resources of the society. Where are the resources? The resources are more with the rich and resources are not reaching the poor. So bring it out from the rich and give it to the poor. So that is redistribution. So when the net benefit, what is the net benefit? Net benefit means you calculate the total cost, you calculate the total benefit, then you make or join together, add together both the components. If the benefit is more, then obviously the, uh, there is no need of, you can say, course correction. There is no need of policy revision. But if the benefit is less, cost is more, then obviously there is something wrong and we need to revise that policy or relocate that policy, redesign that policy. So there are some uh, commonly used cost-benefit measures for policy comparisons. There are different techniques. These need to be explained in a proper manner. Payback. Here, these are some of the, you see, several cost-benefit measures are employed to determine the net efficiency of projects. These measures are payback, discounted payback, net present value, benefit cost ratio, and internal rate of return, IRR, internal rate of return. Here there is use of some mathematical models. And I will explain those. Please uh, just refer to your study material provided by IGNO. Okay. So you keep track of what I am explaining. And here, it will be easier when uh, we uh, keep in touch with these facts and figures which have been cited in the book. So what is the payback model hmm. or payback system of cost-benefit analysis? Here, there is a comparison between two projects. Please uh, refer to table 21 that is page number 246 page number 246 if you have the material with you then you can consult it so here there is a comparison between project a and project b okay and here this uh, This is the simplest among all the cost-benefit measures. 
it simply calculates benefits from a capital project the number of periods it takes in future so the period is five years here under the year column you can mark zero to five zero one two three four five that means in the first year when there was zero in terms of time obviously there was no investment and that is why it has been shown as a negative figure minus 10 lakh minus 10 lakh for project a also project b so for example we examine two capital projects a and b with their cost benefit flows as given in table 21 so here these capital projects a and b each project has the initial investment of rupees 10 lakhs okay 10 lakhs at the beginning there is a positive cash flow there is a positive cash flow from both the projects a and b up to four years up to four years one two three four Positive cash flow means here they are all shown as, for example, your uh, number in the first year for project A it is 4 lakh, for project B 3 lakh, for project A in the second year 3 lakhs, for the project B in second year 3 lakhs, third year 4 lakhs, 3 lakhs, fourth year 2 lakhs, 2 lakhs, fifth year 2 lakhs positive, 2 lakhs negative for B. 2 lakhs negative for B. That means in case of project B, there was no investment. Rather, it was only cost, not uh, benefit or not further investment. There is a negative flow for project B in the fifth year. In the fifth year, it is known as negative flow. Although we can make a statement that project A is superior to project B, since a has positive total cost benefit flow then total products of add kari i mean dekhi ba the project a pahin aasi ba gote positive value how total eta ko add kari dele b ta ko add kari dele i mean dekhi ba sheti hoji kona na uh, uh, value ta kama aasi ba but we should not come to this conclusion since it doesn't take into account the time factor in estimating the value of the costs therefore this measure may not be consistent for comparing projects and is not normally recommended so this method is not that uh, efficient one in order to make a comparison between the two projects or between any two projects Many of the public projects or policies have impacts that will be felt for many years. So impact of project is long term. A project, the impact of a project is long term. Then we can say Nalko. Nalko, the foundation is the foundation of the foundation. Today, the stage is the same. Obviously, the impact is different. When the project was founded, its impact was different. When the commissioning of the plant started, the um, impact was different. When it has already started production process, it has an impact. When the production goes down, also impact. When production increases, that will also have impact, different impacts. So like individuals, the public agency tend to have a preference for benefits sooner rather than later so everybody wants that profit should come quite early benefit benefit sooner rather than later then you say individual institute plant project government private so for example we would have a strong preference of having rupees 82 days 
rather than having rupees 100 after 2 years तनु वर्तमान हम 80 टका मिलु छी हम जे 2 वर्ष पर जने कहब न 200 टका मिलिबो ताले ऑब्वियसली वी विल गो फॉर द प्रेजेंट इनकम 80 रुपीस एट द प्रेजेंट इंस्टेड ऑफ 100 रुपीस आफ्टर 2 इयर्स सो दैट मींस वी आर टेकिंग इनटू अकाउंट द इंटरेस्ट और अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट्स देयरफॉर वी ट्राई टू डिस्काउंट द फ्यूचर मनी टू द प्रेजेंट तनु इटा को कहा जाय डिस्काउंटिंग माने 200 टका को छाड़ के हमें 80 टका रे खुशी हे जवा काहे के ना 80 टका टा हमको एबे मिलु छी 200 टका टा एबे 100 टका टा हमको 2 वर्ष पहरे मिलु तनु ऑटोमेटिकली वी डिस्काउंटेड दैट फ्यूचर कॉस्ट ऑफ मनी 200 टका टा हमको फ्यूचर कॉस्ट मन कॉस्ट ऑफ मनी आ 80 टका टा हमको प्रेजेंट कॉस्ट ऑफ मनी प्रेजेंट कॉस्ट हो जो टा नाम मिलु छी एके तो लेट अस ऑबवियसली वी चॉइस विल गो इन फेवर ऑफ द प्रेजेंट कॉस्ट that is to say in the above example it is worth receiving rupees 80 today rather than receiving 100 two years later it is simple human attendance so what are you when we are making an assessment of projects the projects which are giving us a positive value positive value for ना एक जो देखा जाए जी टेबल 21 रे वो दुई टा प्रोजेक्ट को 500 वर्षों भीतर तक को एसेसमेंट करा जाए जी है ना जितने बड़े ईयर जीरो माने कौन सी टाइम से तब बड़े ना ही तो ना ऑब्वियसली प्रोजेक्ट का कॉस्ट का पॉजिटिव हो मना नेगेटिव हो से तो ना मूल रूप इच्छी चिंता भी करा जाए तार बेनिफिट सेती पाइंट सेटा को माइनस देखा जाएगी माइनस टेन लाख माइनस टेन लाख बी हाउ ए दे वो यार फिर देर वाज नो टाइम टाइम वाज जीरो दैट मेंस इट वाज नॉट एट ऑल इन द थिंकिंग प्रोसेस तो ऑब्वियसली कॉस्ट वाज नेगेटिव एंड सिमिलरली सब्सिक्वेंटली इन केस ऑफ ए देर वर कंटिन्यूअसली सम पॉजिटिव and in case of project B, in the fifth year, there was a negative cost or negative, you can say, uh, um, investment in the project. So, that ultimately gives us the overall impression that project A is doing better than project B. Okay. Kahinki, I do. There is a cost benefit analysis, but cost benefit flow the total payback will go How much it is going to pay back? Paying back to the community, paying back to the people, or paying back to the society. Then the Kuala payback. How much it is going to pay back? Then theta negative on project B re, minus 10 lakh minus 2 lakh. Project A re, booty negative on minus 10 lakh. So obviously, negative value project B is higher than the negative value of project A. Positive value of project E is more or higher than the positive value of project B. So obviously, project A is here paying back more than project B. So payback from project A is more than the payback from project B. Is it clear? Is it clear? Anyone to any can anyone can respond to Sova or Bhavna or Bijay Lakshmi? Yes sir. Okay. Is that example clear? Yes, so sir. this is something ha huh, something element elementary mathematics so which uh, all of us might have covered during our high, high school stage so this is something because you know such type of calculations or such type of uh, considerations are always made in case of projects policies plans which are undertaken because they involve cost so every project every um, um, allocation or every development of project policy plans they involve a cost but cost is always assessed in terms of the benefit if we are going to incur the cost 
how much benefit we are going to get that also needs to be assessed otherwise if it is only in terms of cost but there is no benefit then obviously why should we go for it tenu kebalo jodi ami khali kharcha kari chalthiba kintu ta dhuru kon faida ami pauch na pauch ami jani paru ni tale automatically ami seta ko dibha discounted payback this is also another technique through which we can exactly calculate what is actually the cost and benefit associated with a particular plan policy or project and this is here discounted payback kono and the shortcoming of the payback method can be rectified the so, payback method jo ta ame prathame discuss kole taro shortcoming ta ba taro jo ta jo ta rohila durbolata that can be verified or that can be addressed through this method and this method is known as discounted payback so what is discounted payback has been explained through this example there is a very uh, simple formula which has been given and it can also be on stored now just try to keep track with me <coughs> so here the shortcoming of the payback method can be rectified by incorporating the time value of the money time value of money that means how much value money is going to give us in the long term time value of money okay so the cost benefit flows are discounted to incorporate the time value of the money we discount future value of money to present value jo ta ke 80 tanka 100 tanka example ta bujha jai o ta ko me discount kare and jo ta amku immediate benefit dei pare nahi bujhu chena ne to 80 tanka amku nagad miluchi kintu 100 tanka amku promise kara jai chi 2 2 varsha par pai to mu jana obviously present that is present cost of value present cost of value present value by cost of and same the jo ta ami jo future re pauche seta future value jo ta ko ki sahaj re samaste discount kar da discount kar da mane seta ko attribute da seta ko consider no kari ki borom jo ta present the present re ache seita ko consider kariba seta ho seta ko discounting boli ko ajo So the cost benefit flows are discounted to incorporate to the time value of money we discount future value of money to present value by using an appropriate discount rate that is called r r and the present value of the future money present value of the future money एक्सप्लेन तनु पीवी टा कोन ना प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द फ्यूचर मन प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द फ्यूचर मन एफ वी हो जी कोन ना फ्यूचर वैल्यू ऑफ द मन आर हो जी डिस्काउंट रेट यूजुअली एक्सप्रेस इन परसेंटेज तनु डिस्काउंट रेट टा परसेंटेज टर्म्स के सबुला एक्सप्रेस करा जाए एवं एन हो जी नंबर ऑफ इयर्स From zero, from the year zero. Hmm. Then Gautam, ये उड़ा को सबू explain करी दिला को आरे. उटे छोटिया example दिया जाए कि कहते कौन? ना सबू. In our example, we assume that the discount rate is six percent. That माने R is six. For example, for project A. टोटल ट्वेंटी वन रेट दिया जाए प्रोजेक्ट ए तो एफ बी और फ्यूचर वैल्यू ऑफ द मनी 
एट ईयर फाइव ईयर फाइव देख ना रेफर टू टेबुल ट्वेंटी पेज टू फर्टी सिक्स ओके इज इट ओके सो इफ यू कीप ट्रैक ऑफ द बुक इफ यू हैव द बुक इन योर पोजिशन राइट नाउ इट कैन बी इजिली ऑन स्टोर अदरवाइज इट विल नॉट बी दैट इज इट टू बी ऑन स्टोर do you have the book with you i am just asking do you have the book with you or not no sir i don't have right now acha okay okay so then it will not be that easy to uh, understand thank you na unless we keep track problem ta even jehetu direct reference rochi previous page soito ye soito eta material achi samasta ko pakha material achi to yes sir हाँ तेन मेटेरियल पाखे रही कहीं जो गुडा आसी गला कि यूनिट गुडा के लिए रही सब मैथमेटिकल मॉडल्स स्टैटिस्टिकल डिराइवेशन आगुड़ा का आम मेटेरियाल सहित मैच कर पढ़ले बुझीहब ना एक्जामपल गुड़ाक जेहतु बहुत दि जाए तेणु आमको से गुड़ाक ये करा पड़े व्हाट इज अबाउट भावना एंड विजयलक्ष्मी डू यू हाव दी Study material with you or not? Bhavna and Vijay Lakshmi. Yes, sir. Okay, then and uh, Vijay Lakshmi. Perhaps Vijay Vijay Lakshmi. Do you have the material with you? Study material. Yes, sir. Okay, so. Uh, those who are having the study material in their possession, please keep track. But I am telling. Sir, what are I you saying? I am telling you to uh, have the material right now in your hands, so that it will be easier to understand the problems which have been given in the book. Can you na? Ye jo concept gula ka me bhujru se, vartaman se gula ka. हाँ तेणु से बही सहित तो मैच करके बुझे कहीं प्रोब्लेम गुड़ाक मुझे एक्सप्लेन करा ना जेहेतु से प्रोब्लेम गुड़ाक मुझे एक्सप्लेन करें बुझीपुर बहुत सोफार सो गुड तथापि मोर एक्सट्रा आसीस्टास् आई एम गिविंग होपिंग दैट इट विल हेल्प यू बुझे ना नहीं जदि निजे बुझीपार तो बहुत बढ़िया मान बुझी हम कहीं सब एलिमेटरी मैथमेटिक्स अच्छी जो गुड़ा डिफिकल्ट आसा मुझे यहाँ जेहेतु मो कैपेसीटी भर अच्छी से आई एम ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू मो कैपेसीटी बाहर को जो पल हाँ मो कैपेसीटी बाहर को जो पल आई विल सो बर्तमान देख ये प्रोब्लेम टा दि जाए डिस्काउंटेड पेपैक तेणु डिस्काउंटेड बैक पे बैक टा कौन आसला ना पे बैक रिस्टेक टा को रिमुव करने इन अर्डर टू गेट रिड अफ दि ड्र बैक और सर्ट कर्मिज हुई व्यर एनकाउंटर ड्यूरींग द पे बैक मेथड पे बैक मेथड हूँ कौन ना दैट इज नारेटेड इन पेज टू फोर्टी सिक्स अफ यूनिट ट्वेंटी यूनिट ट्वेंटी इन द बुक सो देर इज ए कंपेरिजन विटवीन टू प्रोजेक्ट प्रोजेक्ट ए प्रोजेक्ट बी and in the discounted payback which has been explained in page 247 247 now that is on the basis of a formula small formula so that is there are the concepts like present value of the future money future value of the money then rate of discount and then number of years pv fd r In. and they have here made a comparison made a calculation calculation of what cost benefit analysis of a project in a period of uh, um, in a certain period so suppose in our example we assume that the discount rate is 6% okay discount rate is 6% 
for example for project a jo ta ki page 246 ra achi project a jo table ta diya jai chi table 21 boli ta title sei table 21 re project a the fb or future value at year 5 soba last tole jo ta ho chi kete na rupees 2 lakh project a pe dekho year 5 sange re corresponding figure ho chi rupees 2 lakh the rate of discount we assumed is 6 6% then you know, bartan so value gura ko formula re basai dile e jo formula ami paile kono na pv ba present value kahinki bartan amko gote project ko present value amko kono do 5 barsha ami lagila mane simple language re koiba ko le we took 5 years to establish a project within these 5 years how much we have spent as cost and how much benefit we are going to get out of it that is benefit so cost benefit analysis this cost benefit analysis will help us in knowing in understanding whether the project is viable or not whether we shall go with the project or we will scrap the project abolish the project that is the thing kahinki na jodi ame ame en gote project koriba ba basaiba kete bele jeto se amo kono loss dei chalthiwo you chena nai tan jota amo ko benefit bodol re jodi khali amar cost hei chalila kharcha amar body chalila benefit kichhi na eta plain and simple ho cha ame kebe जणे से बाटा रे जीवन आहि किंतु जदि बेनिफिट जण को मिलु छि अधिका कॉस्ट ऑफ इथा ताहाले सेते बेले जणे विल प्रोसीड फर्दर और विल गो अहेड अदरवाइज ई और सी विल नेवर गो अहेड और कंटिन्यू विथ द प्रोसेस सो नाउ दिस फार्मूला दैट इज पीवी इज इक्वल टू एफ बी होल इनटू 1 बाय 1 plus r to the power n sab guda kar value diya dil jai chi pv ro value am ko jana achi fv ro value bhi jana achi r ho chi rate jo ta 6 n ho chi number of years jo ta ki 5 from 0 to 5 so now by calculating you find a value concrete value tum dekho sei formula ko pv is equal to kete milu chi ना फिफ्थ इयर रे फिफ्थ इयर रे प्रोजेक्ट इयर रे प्रोजेक्ट ए रे इन्वेस्टमेंट है कि 2 लाख तनो 2 लाख नया दे छि सेठी कोट ये हो छि सेटा एफ बी का फ्यूचर वैल्यू 5 वर्ष परे जने यदि एति कि दोटा प्रोजेक्टर लगाए ताहेले तारो प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ता कोन है पारे बा 5 वर्ष लागि छि ताको 5 वर्ष तळे से सेति कि खर्च कर छि ताहेले वर्तमान तार प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ता केते 1/1+ ROG 6% 6% 0.06 एलिमेंटरी मैथमेटिक्स नॉलेज अछि ताले तुमे जानि परथियो 6% ता होछि डेसिमल रे ता को एक्सप्रेस कर देले तार वैल्यू ता होछि 0.06 सब वैल्यू पके देला पर वर्तमान सेई फार्मूला हम को दोछु गोटे वैल्यू कोन ना 149460 तेनो 149460 तो ऑबवियसली हमें देखो छ कोन ना सेई गोटा को वर्तमान टेबल 22 रे सेई दिन छटा को कैरी फॉरवर्ड करा दै छ पेज 247 देखो फिफ्थ ईयर प्रोजेक्ट ए 2 लाख किंतु तार आसी छि प्रेजेंट वैल्यू हे जाय छि कोन फिफ्थ ईयर पाखर देखो जोटा 5 अछि टेबल रो ईयर ईयर कॉलम रे लास्ट हो छि 5 प्रोजेक्ट ए पई लेखा है छि कॉस्ट बेनिफिट फ्लो डिस्काउंटेड कॉस्ट बेनिफिट फ्लो दीटा कॉलम प्रोजेक्ट बी पई भी दीटा कॉलम कॉस्ट बेनिफिट फ्लो आ गोटा हला डिस्काउंटेड कॉस्ट बेनिफिट फ्लो सेथरे सब फिगर को रखा जाय छि जोटा कि ऑलरेडी थिला हमरो फिगर टेबल 21 रे से गोटा को वर्तमान 22 को शिफ्ट करा जाय छि एवं 22 रे वर्तमान देखा जाउ छि कोन ना 5th ईयर रे जेते बेले कॉस्ट क्लर 2 लाख 
तार डिस्काउंटेड कॉस्ट बेनिफिट फ्लो रे आनो छि वैल्यू केते 149460 सो ऑब्जर्व द टेबल 22 जो दुजन को पाखरे मटेरियल अछि एग्जैक्टली से बहिर एटा को देखो ऑब्जर्व द टेबल 22 द रिटर्न्स फ्रॉम प्रोजेक्ट बी डू नॉट पे बैक द इनिशियल इन्वेस्ट प्रोजेक्ट बी बट द रिटर्न फ्रॉम प्रोजेक्ट ए पे बैक इन द फिफ्थ ईयर व्हाइल द डिस्काउंटेड पे बैक मेथड इज कंसिस्टेंट सिंस इट टेक्स इन टू अकाउंट द टाइम वैल्यू ऑफ द मनी it fails to take into account all the cost benefit flows generated by each project mane fifth year re exactly jaha tila table originally 21 re sei value gura ko paka jai chi ko thi na cost benefit flow re project a re zero jete bele year thila jete bele thila investment माइनस 10 लाख बी रे भी थिला माइनस 10 लाख तापर ईयर 1 ईयर 2 ईयर 3 ईयर 4 ईयर 5 प्रोजेक्ट ए पई कोन है जी ना कॉस्ट बेनिफिट फ्लो रे 2 लाख 3 लाख 4 2 2 एवं सेम थी बी रे माइनस 10 लाख 3 3 3 2 माइनस 2 लाख हम तेनो से कैलकुलेशन टा कर देला परे बी रे नेगेटिव देखौ छी दुई जगह रे ईयर 0 रे ईयर 5 जगह रे ईयर 0 करेस्पोंडिंगली देखौ छी 9 माइनस फिगर एवं ईयर 5 सेठी भी बी रो देखौ छी माइनस वैल्यू हम तनो तो डिस्काउंटेड कॉस्ट बेनिफिट्स कैन आल्सो बी कंप्यूटेड यूजिंग डिस्काउंट टेबल even at the end of this unit put a discount table be it diya jai chi ei unit ro end re taro ame for the use je dorkar padile kara jai paribo for example if we want to calculate discounted future benefits for the following data put a data diya jai chi taro calculation kor ki dekha jai chi se data ta puni that is fabricated table sahit kono si taro samparko nahi there is no relationship of this uh, data with the table. Table ko tha ethi roliya. Table thali ethi ki kono na in these two techniques, one is payback, the other is discounted payback. So discounted payback is giving us a clearer picture to us. Okay, and here again we come to the same conclusion. Then the payback rate. Can we write like this in a uh exam re problem oriented ye padi bakuna i can't say because i do not have the experience jehe tu eta unit ach achi sethi pai i wanted to explain it kai re e jinsa gura ka samastan ko dei hei pariba nai bodh hue i suppose i do not know but i suppose perhaps this problem oriented questions may not come your exam come in your exam <laughs> बुझिन नै किंतु जेहेतु अछि एवं जो गुडी को पर्यंत जो गुडी को पर्यंत आमे बुझी पारिबा लेट अस ट्राय बुझिन नै ए गुडा को हमरो एलिमेंटरी मैथमेटिक्स जोटा के आमे समस्त प्राय हाई स्कूल पर्यंत पढिसि सेही बेसिस ऊपर आधारित तनो बेसी किछि पैनिक हबार नै डरिबार किछि नै ए टाइप रो के त पढि न पारे आई सपोज काकिना गोटा तुम्हारा पेपर पेपर रूप तुम्हारा आशुतोष बोलते हैं फाइव क्वेश्चंस ना कोना जहाँ पार्टन जहाँ फाइव क्वेश्चंस कोई लेता है अभी तो आराम से तुम्हारा चॉइस भी थी वो तो नो जो टा प्रॉब्लम हो रही है इंटरेस्ट के टाइप को यू में ओमिट और यू में मिस यू कैन अटेंड अदर क्वेश्चंस नो नीड टू पैनिक shape of questions or nature of questions okay then you know, discounted payback 
पाई बेटर आउट ऑफ़ निया जाएगी एग्जांपल तो उनका फ्यूचर वैल्यू को आ जाओ ची फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड ये न हो ची फोर माने देखा मो अवश्य आई डोंट हैव द कैपेसिटी टू कमेंट ऑन द राइटर्स ऑफ़ द बुक किंतु चे जो मेथड अठे आड़ करी चुनती दे हैव नॉट एक्चुअली एक्सप्लेन्ड द एंटायर मैथमेटिकल डिराइवेशंस इन ए क्लियर कट मैन योजन है ना माने जो ये नहीं चुनती ताकु थोरोली से माने एक्सप्लेन करी ना है अच्छा ये ठीक तो टेबल पर जन तो आ सीधे और ताक के ना ये ठीक वोटे आउ वोटे आने की रैंडम फिगर इमेजिनरी फिगर आने की थोक चुनती तार रिलिवेंस कौन टॉपिक सही तो मूवी जान पाना ये चीज़ है ना तो ये सब उस जिन्हें सो आई थिंक यूसुड हाँ वोटा रैंडम फिगर टाइने क इटा तो दे दिले जी नहीं सी फॉर्मूला पके की कैलकुलेट कर दियो किंतु आर और रिलिवेंस का टॉपिक सही तो कौन हो इसे टाको कुनी जानी बार होती ना तो ना सेकी टाइम में कोई जी कौन हो आई एम नॉट क्वालिफाइड इनफ टू कमेंट ऑन दी कैलिबर ऑफ डोज हु हैव रिटेन द बुक्स बट एनीवे देयर शुड बी प्रॉपर क तो मुझे रैंडम फिगर कहीं क्या सिला रैंडम एग्जांपल कहीं क्या सिला तारों रैशनल मुझे जानी पड़ूना आज जो दिया मैं वही दवा से डिस्काउंटेड वैल्यू इटा कुछ जानी बा पाई इटा कुछ दिया जाएगी किंतु बुक रो नैरेटिव सही तो तारों संपर्क को टाइम मुझे जानी पड़ूना ओके एनीवे किंतु बीटा � बुझी पारी बस हमने छेड़ा को यू क्या ना आल्सो ऑन स्टार्ट सो तापर ऐसे जो पुणे आउट वोटे नेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू डेट इज़ आल्सो अनदर टेक्निक नेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू जो टके आज ही टाइम होगा ना ही ये तो प्राय टाइम एक लड़ने हम को सो वी शुड स्टॉप हियर बिल्कुल नहीं ये दूसरी टेबल पर है बहुत म प्राय दिस मैथमेटिकल्स और दिस न्यूमेरिकल अप्रोच कंटिन्यूज पढ़ा सब तो ट्वेंटी दें फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी वन देर इस सम थियोरेटिकल एस्पेक्ट फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी वन तू ट्वेंटी फोर देर आर सम थियोरेटिकल एस्पेक्ट्स एग्ज़ैम देर इस आल्सो इन Unit uh, 21, there is further mention about some tables or some figures. Then there are also some computer simulations, some examples from by citing some computer pages. Computer pages. Hmm. In 21. Let me see. So again, there is also some use of these uh, tables, figures, etc. In 22, unit 22. Hmm. I don't think it is that much essential for you or not. But I will try to explain to the extent it is possible on my part. जो पर्जन तो मुंह बुझुची सेटा तुम्हें को बुझे अपन चेस्टा करेगी किंतु माइन सॉल्यूशन की दैट यू प्लीज सिट विथ योर मैटेरियल इफ इट इज मैच्ड इफ द एक्सप्लेनेशन इज प्रोग्रेसिंग कमेंसुरेट विथ द मैटेरियल इन योर हैंड्स देन इट कैन बी इजीर टू अंडरस्टैंड अदरवाइज इट विल बी डिफिकल्ट ओके so mostly uh, here towards these units there is increasing use of these numerical data numbers figures tables etc okay so today it is uh, time i must thank you profusely to susova then bhavna and vijayalakshmi and also rc bhuvaneshwar for coordinating this uh, entire process Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you.